So I had this piece of firewood sitting around, showed a lot of promise, a nice little piece of maple, had a lot of bumps on the outside, wanted to see what was inside of this. I cut into it and um, found that it had some really nice quilted maple patterns to it. So didn't want to throw that away. Well, Friday night happens to be pizza night at our house. So why not? I decided to make a pizza peel. I had enough wood from my firewood log to make two pizza peels. I'm going to be using some um, quilted maple on the center and the top handle for one. This is also maple that was milled from our property, but it's a little bit finer grain and just a little bit spalty. On the left side, I've got spalted maple in the middle. Decided to tie that together with a handle that uses this same quilted maple and put the quilted maple on the outsides. Here I have some pieces of walnut for a little bit of contrast. That's a cut off from a board that had a big knot, so that's about all that was going to be usable on this end of the board anyway. The peels are made to fit onto our pizza stone, which is about 15 inches wide and 14 inches deep. So I've got this one set at, my rough boards are 16 wide. For this one it's about 13, a little bit better. I'm going to be shaping a little bit off the sides. And the depth, again, is about 15 deep. So I can get a pretty good pizza pie on each one of these. Now that I have the boards all cut, planed, and uh, set together, I'm going to glue these up in this position. I'll glue the handles on afterwards, after I have everything sanded down to make sure it's a good smooth contact point. For the handle piece, I have the center line drawn down the board, and I have, I'll take the width of that and lock it in. I'll step off three of those down the center line, and that's what I'm going to use to set my arc. So I'll go back out to the original point, and I'll swing that arc. And that is the arc that I'll be cutting out on a bandsaw. Do the same thing for this board where I have the arc drawn here. This one's a little bit fatter on the top end, so I have room to, to expand this handle out on the top. So I've drawn the arc for the top of that as well. And then for the side arcs, it's just a gentle arc, taking it in about a half an inch on either side. So I have a handle that's about an inch and five eighths in the center where you're going to be grabbing. That'll give a little bit more comfortable grab. I'll be rounding these edges over to give a real comfortable ergonomic feel. For this board, the handle is going to come to about this height. It's um, I'll put the bottom of this right about there. That means the top of the board is going to be short a little bit, but that's okay. I want to make sure that this all fits, so I've, um, for the top of this shape, I've taken, again, the dividers at the width that I have here, just a little bit less than at the bottom, and stepped off from the center line to find the center point, drew the arc, which ends up giving me a semicircle for the top part here. The two pieces of uh, quilted maple are book matched, so I want to make sure that those line up across from each other the way that I wanted them to. So I line these up at the bottom, and I'm going to put some dominoes in, just some very small four millimeter dominoes to hold everything in place right where I have it set right now. Because I'm using the half inch material instead of a thicker material, and I'm using the Domino XL, the bigger version, I have installed the Seneca Woodworking dock plate to the bottom, which essentially puts the thickness of uh, this fence right at the center line of the 
mortise that I'm going to plow with a plunge with the domino. And that way I can just simply measure my stock to the millimeters, look at this uh, difference here, and since I have 14 millimeters, I'm going for 7 millimeters at this center point here. And I just set that for my fence height. It's so difficult to see where the line is. And that's why I decided to put some blue tape on it so that I can more easily see where I need to plunge this cut. It'll be no problem to plunge through tape. so, And that makes it so I can line up really easily with the mark. Now I'll do the glue up. I can glue my boards directly onto the clamps so I don't have to fuss with trying to put them on later. Uh, I've got my dominoes ready and I'll be reversing the clamps putting two on the top in the center to make sure everything stays flat and also using a board on top just as I clamp things down to keep everything really flat. A small painter's palette knife like this works really well to get into these small mortises for the for the tiny dominoes. On these outside boards, it doesn't matter that I'm tapping against my clamps. Uh, I'm going to be cutting off the outside edge anyway, but on the interior boards, I want to make sure that when I tap the dominoes in, that goes against the flat surface.